Uh, my name is Morgan Baker. I work for the Department of Ecology, and I am part of the team working to address 6-PPD and its transformation chemical 6-PPD quinone in stormwater. Um, those of you who are familiar with this issue know that 6-PPD is used ubiquitously globally, and it is in stormwater streams everywhere. It is the leading toxicant for coho mortality, and the levels at which it is lethal to coho are very low. Our panel speaker today, Chi Min Hu, is a PhD student out of the University of Washington working to fill some of the data gaps surrounding this emerging chemical. He's studying data analysis on the LCMS data and urban stormwater contamination issues associated with 6PPDQ. And we'll hear about some of the recent research efforts to describe this chemical um, and its properties, including its environmental fate and occurrence. Additional results related to treatment of roadway runoff in several representative treatment systems will also be presented. And with that, I will just ask you to silence your cell phones and save your questions until the end. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so as just been introduced, my name is Jimmy Yu from University of Washington. I'm a PhD student graduating soon, um, hopefully. <laughs> and, uh, um, so today I'd like to share some uh, study and results uh, from our group regarding the uh, investigation of this novel uh, contaminant, 6 uh, But Let me move the cursor out of the way. Okay, so um, as you might heard, uh, there is a mysterious coho salmon mortality that observed in past few years in the Pacific Northwest area, uh, which mostly happens during the rain season. And uh, our group uh, in 2020 reported our result uh, and identified that uh, smoking gun for the coho salmon mortality and reported that campaign as uh, 6 quinone. So this chemical is one of the most toxic chemical we know so far uh, for the coho salmon fishes with uh, LC50, that's the uh, toxic, effective uh, toxic dose of uh, 95 nanograms per liter. And uh, right after our report of uh, this chemical, uh, there are uh, groups from the uh, global, like worldwide reporting the global detection of 6 3 quinone, including Canada, Germany, China, and Australia. So this compound has been found uh, in runoff, receiving waters, uh, road dust, and soils, and uh, also in the air particles. So just referring to uh, our updated results from uh, uh, paper from last year, we reported the roadway runoff concentration of 6 quinone. And as you can see here from the three sites, we took samples, uh, 6 quinone concentration were all detected above uh, the uh, LC50 of the, of the coho salmon fish. So to making this problem even worse, uh, there was a study from 2022 reported the 6 pbd quinone uh, detection in human urine. And uh, they highlighted that the highest concentration of this chemical were actually detected in the pregnant women. So uh, with all these detections and the presence of this chemical, we are curious to see or in investigate its formation, environmental fate and transport. So as the first step, uh, last year we uh, reported the uh, reaction or formation mechanism of 6 quinone. So 6 quinone was actually formed from a common antioxidant 6 that used as a tire rubber antioxidant. And uh, during, the uh, during the environmental uh, conditions, uh, especially the ozone exposure, 6 will be converted into 6 quinone. And uh, uh, more details were included in this publication we sent out last year. But basically, as we know so far, we know where it comes from. We know it, it induces such uh, acute uh, mortality in the coho salmon, but we don't know anything else. There is only scarce information about 6 quinone so far. So today I'd like to share some uh, preliminary investigation we did follow up the uh, formation mechanism of 6 pbd quinone, including uh, three different sections. Uh, the first part is gonna be a uh, basic property of 6 pbd quinone. Second part is gonna be uh, environmental fate of this compound. Uh, we did some lab scale simulated works to trying to figure out the environmental fate of this chemical. 
And thirdly, we also uh, did some samplings of different treatment systems to see the removal efficiency of C3 quinone. So let's start with the basic property of this compound. Uh, basically, first we tested the solubility of C3 quinone. The water solution were prepared and we used the centrifugation approach. Uh, basically, the water solution were prepared at different concentration and we centrifuged them trying to separate the over like solid part from the uh, soluble 60 degree kernel. And then we plot the result out uh, as the pre-centrifuge 60 degree concentration versus post-centrifuge, trying to determine the uh, solubility limit of this chemical. And showing here is the result we get. Uh, the calculated solubility is showing on the red dash line. It's around 30 uh, micrograms per liter. The black dash line is the center error deviation. So um, as comparing to other compound, this chemical definitely is a poorly soluble in water, but it could still easily above the LC50 reported at uh, 95 nanograms per liter. And secondly, we measured the log KOW uh, hydrophobicity of this compound. Uh, basically the water solution has been prepared again. We added uh, pre-clean octanol and used sonication and centrifugation to make sure this compound is uh, partitioned into different phases. And then we measure the concentration in different phases and calculate uh, the log KLW of this chemical. It is 4.3. Um, so you might be curious about what this number exactly means. So here's a reference from uh, a previous study. Uh, the, res the researchers has uh, measured the fish uh, gill uptake efficiency of chemicals with different log KLW values. And as you can see here, well, while the chemicals having a uh, log KLW between three and seven, the uptake efficiency is the highest around 60 per, uh, 60%. And our measured value of 6 really quinone log KLW 4.3 is sitting right in the middle. So this indicates that this compound is highly bioavailable to fishes, which aligns with our observation of uh, the coho salmon mortality. And also this is a typical log KLW uh, that indicates this compound could be feasibly partitioned into soil, rubber and plastic materials, which I will also show that in the next slide. So the third part of the basic properties we've tested um, and maybe also uh, tightly connecting to the treatment process is the sorption potential of 6 3 kernel. We use the different uh, conventional materials that use in the lab to test the 6 3 quinone sorption potentials. Um, basically, we just either submerge the materials into the solution or we pour the solution into the containers made by different materials. So here's the summary of uh, 12 materials we've tested. It's a little bit mess, so I would like to simplify it into the four major categories, glass, plastic, rubber, and silicone. So the concentration shown here is the relative concentration and we test it uh, for different contact time of five minutes uh, or up to 24 hours. These are all the aqueous phase concentration of 6 3 quinone. So as you can see, um, it is pretty obvious that in the glass uh, group, there's no sorption of 6 3 quinone at all. On the other hand, uh, rubber and silicone materials uh, after 24 hours contact, there's essentially no 6 3 quinone left in the water phase. For the plastic, uh, we've tested PD PDFE. Uh, this one showed around 50% of uh, sorption of 6 3 quinone for 24 hours contact. So after we tested some basic properties of 6 3 quinone, then we are uh, heading towards the lab scale simulation of the environmental fate. Uh, firstly, we tested the leaching dynamic of this compound uh, when it's being leached out from the tower particles. Basically, this is a system we build in the lab to simulate what is going on when the tower particle deposited onto the road surface. And uh, the picture is showing the system we, we've used in the lab. Basically, we are leaching this column, uh, highlighted in the red dash line box. Hopefully you can see that clear. Um, this column is packed with glass beads and uh, uh, that mixed with the uh, particle. We are trying to disperse the particles as much as possible. And we leach this column for six hours uh, and collect the leachate to determine the concentration in this output leachate. 
So uh, here is a normalized result we get. It basically normalized to the first sampling point and throughout the six hours. That's the aqueous leaching uh, 6 ribidium quinone concentration in the off-lab leaching. And to make this more straightforward, we basically integrated uh, the result from the plot on the left and uh, trying to determine the cumulative leached mass of 6 ribidium quinone over time and calculated from our six hours trial, we got 5.15 micrograms per gram 6 ribidium quinone leached out from the tower particle we've tested. So this number is a little bit vague because we don't have any comparison. That, so in order to uh, overcome that, basically we get this uh, solvent extraction. We use uh, methanol as the organic solvent to extract a tower particles to see how much 6 ribidium quinone is available in total in the tower particles. And the numbers we get is around three times higher than the numbers we got from the water addition process. So from the result here, there are some quick conclusions. Firstly, we saw pretty rapid discharge of 6 ribidium in the models we've tested. As you can see uh, on the left panel, the highest concentration of 6 ribidium were actually detected at the first point we chipped the samples. And secondly, uh, as we only got one third of the total mass leached out during the six hours trial, this indicates there should be much, much more residual security critical mass in the tower particle after leaching. And this also indicates that tower particles would induce a long-term effect if you're considering other chemicals within the tower particles like 6 ppd or HMMM. So those chemicals are also might having a similar leaching dynamic as 6 ppd quinone and uh, induce a longer term adverse effect to the environment. And uh, secondly, after we know how fast or how it discharge, we are then curious about the aqueous stability of this camera. Because once it's discharged into the surface water, we're then wondering how long it can be stable within the water. So we tested the uh, 6 ribidium quinone water stability uh, among different pHs, including 5, 7, and 9. Uh, and we took samples up to 47 days. Um, so this is the plot showing the relative concentration all over the 47 days. And I would like to zoom in for the first seven days. That might be a relative time scale for a specific like storm event. So from the result, uh, you can tell that firstly, for the first three days, 6 ppd quinone is fairly stable. We saw less than 10% of degradation happens within three days. Secondly, over the whole uh, 47 days, 6 ppd exhibit a moderate degradation around 30%. So basically that tells 6 ppd quinone should be relatively stable after being discharged into surface water. And with all that, uh, we then turn to some uh, failed samplings to test the existing treatment systems removal efficiency of 6 ppd quinone. So we took samples from uh, January 2021 to May 2022. And uh, there are three groups of materials tested, including the ZPG, uh, compost leaf, and the uh, cytocompost media. Showing on the left is a, a photo of one of the treatment system. You can see the pipelines, they're collecting the uh, surface runoff and send them into the uh, treatment chamber that packed with the columns with uh, these uh, treatment materials. And these are more photos of uh, uh, what this chamber looks like. So in general, we got um, samples from uh, three areas, six sites. And in total, we get uh, 31 samples. These three areas, including the Old Hope Valley, Issaquah, and the Pierce County. And here are the site information and the media is tested. I would like to note that uh, in this six different sites, four of them were using the ZPG, while uh, two of them using the uh, compost medias. So here shows the result we got so far. Um, I'm plotting the uh, box and whiskers as the distribution of different uh, sampling date. And the red triangles represent for individual samples. Uh, on the bottom, I also highlighted the uh, treatment material that used in different sites. So as you can see, uh, the removal e e efficiency of 6 ppd really varied a lot. 
Uh, I think this is mostly because of the complex environmental conditions such as the precipitation rate, flow rate, or even the traffic volume will affect the final removal result. But even so, uh, unfortunately, among the sites we've sampled, we only see a low to medium removal rate of C3B kernel. That's on average of 30%. Oh, sorry, jump one. But uh, one site I would like to specifically highlight here is the Oham Creek. We saw pretty high removal rate. But again, I would like to uh, note that we only have two samples from that site. So further investigations and monitoring will be needed to helping us determine the best strategy handling this campaign for sure. So with all that, I would like to quickly summarize the result we get. And here are some take home messages. Uh, in the study uh, we've conducted, firstly, we determined the solubility of this compound as uh, uh, around 40 micrograms per liter. This is a poorly water soluble chemical. And secondly, we've got the log KOW of 4.3 of this chemical, indicating it is a highly bioavailable uh, contaminant. According to our test of the absorption potentials, we figured out this chemical is absorptive to rubber and silicon. Hence, we would advocate when handling this chemical in the lab or uh, for transportations, we would um, just encourage uh, to use uh, glass materials to handle this uh, chemical. And uh, according to our leaching test, uh, around the six hours leaching, we got around five micrograms per gram tower particles, 6GBD quinone leached from the tower particles and with a pretty rapid release dynamics. And for the aqueous stability over 47 days, we saw around 30% of the grade of this chemical. It is a fairly stable chemical in water. And finally, uh, unfortunately, in the tested treatment systems, we only saw around 30% of average removal rate. So there is a lot of space for us to improve and investigate regarding the uh, remediation, policymaking, and whatever with this uh, uh, emerging contaminant. So besides all of that, there are still uh, something else we need to know, including the 6 really quinone on environmental failure and transport, like uh, what is uh, what its uh, like sorption potentials into the soil, treatment media, et cetera. And secondly, we also need to figure out more efficient strategy to handle this chemical, including how we can make it degrade or absorb this kind of uh, studies. And finally, I would like to reiterate that 6 quinone is a relatively stable and bioavailable environmental toxicant. So that's all the contents I have. 